Welcome to our service of worship here at Bethany United Methodist Church in Gloucester Point, Virginia. Our Caroline Prelude was our national anthem as we worship on this Independence Day weekend. On behalf of the Bethany family, I am so glad that you tuned in. May God richly bless you and all of us as we worship today and every day. We are making plans to return to in-person worship. Please stay tuned because as we have all seen, COVID-19 conditions change every day. And I know that you want to hear a date of return. Thank you for your patience. We're close to getting that date established. If there is a way that we can encourage you or help you, please call the church at 804-642-2110 and leave a detailed message. Bethany cares. The church of Jesus Christ is one church and one body with many expressions. Our prayers today come from our brothers and sisters in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Let us pray. Even as we are dispersed due to the effects of this pandemic, dear Lord, we know that we are still united and are in one accord and in one faith. Be gracious to us and bless us as we worship you in spirit and in truth, O Lord. Break down every idol in our hearts and minds. Let your people sing with joy. Thank you for your unifying spirit that still binds our hearts together in Christian love. And we ask you, O God, to open our hearts that we might be receptive to the move of the spirit as it comes to us. As we give thanks to you for the birth of our nation and always for your son and our savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our voluntary is The Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa. Congress made it the official national march of our country in 1987. Sousa wrote lyrics to the piece, and these are the lyrics to the trio and the grandioso. Hurrah for the flag of the free. May it wave as our standard forever the gem of the land and the sea, the banner of the right. Let despots remember the day when our fathers with mighty endeavors proclaimed as they marched to the fray that by their might and by their right it waves forever.
God of the ages. Verses 1, 2, and 3. We invite you to sing wherever you are. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we praise you for your holy name. And in this weekend when we celebrate our independence, we give thanks for our dependence on you, Lord, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that out of your great love for us, that you sent us your only son, Jesus, to die upon the cross for our sins and to put us in a right relationship with God and redeem our souls and all who truly turn to you. We confess, dear Lord, that we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. Hear us as we confess our faults and our sins to you. Lord, have mercy upon each one praying to you for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and our own souls. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are repentant according to your promises declared to the whole world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, that we may hereafter live a godly and a righteous and a sober life to the glory of your holy name. And on this day we ask you that you do for us what you did at the very first Pentecost. And to all in every land and race, tongue, origin, tradition, and century, send us your spirit. Send us your comforter to cheer and to guide Give us strength and courage so that we might live as your people in a time when your unifying spirit is needed most. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all your people, upon all the generations, so that we might prophesy and see visions and dream dreams and live into the fullness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer concerns today for Donna Lane, for the healing of an ear infection. Our praise for Jean and for Jeannie Harrell for having a better week than usual and for Jean's strengthening and for Jeannie's continuing caregiving. For Marshall and for Bonnie Lewis, Marshall will have a heart cath at Duke next Thursday, July the 9th. And then a decision will be made the next day whether or not he has an aorta replacement using the TAVR procedure. We pray for Mike Neary at home, still seriously ill. Prayers for the healing of sores, rashes, and ongoing pain from a stomach ulcer and for physical therapy to be scheduled. For Ashley Neary, his daughter, who will have knee surgery July the 20th. For David Lewis, who continues to experience back pain. For Greg and Lynn Barnes, grateful that Tesk regarding Greg's cancer are through and hopefully start proton therapy in the next few weeks, which will be eight weeks of daily treatment. We give you thanks for Allison Lindquist praise report, the niece of Tom and Charla Bernard, that as she has been suffering from colon cancer, her chemo is finished and she is declared cancer free. Thank you, Lord. The need for faith and hope does not lessen. She'll be under close watch for the next five years. We pray for great test results in July. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those in our Bethany family experiencing cancer or chemotherapy treatments, for Krista Chase and Carol Johnson, David Lewis, Ted Peterman, and Matt Shackelford. For those with health issues, including Mike Anderson, Irene Brown, Woody Brown, Don Klutz, Jimmy and Kathleen Green, Claire Hall, Paige Mitchell, Jane Niehammer, Peggy Peterman, Nancy Smith, Jack Wallace, Fred Townsend, for those recovering from surgery, especially for Marsha Germeck and for Joy Long, for our homebound, Linda Booth, Catherine Jordan, Alice McGee, for those at Gloucester House, Lorraine Brown, Jean Haywood, Esther, Esther Marie Jordan, and Archie Lee. For Mary Margaret Covanen in Manor Care in Arlington Heights, Illinois. For Ellis Hall in Sanders Assisted Living. For Pauline Harris in Sunrise Senior Living in Richmond. And for Mary Poland and for Alice Doggett at York Convalescent and Rehab Center. Lord, for all of these, and for these now that we lift up in silent prayer to you, hear our prayers. And hear your whole church as we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our anthem today is by our member, Carol Johnson, God Bless America. The four lyrics for God Bless America, originally penned by Irving Berlin in 1918, are not widely known. The song was revived by Berlin in 1938 and reintroduced on Armistice Day by singer Kate Smith. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance in a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God America, my home, sweet home. Just want to share a few announcements with you today. Our healthy church team will quarterback are returning to in-person worship. They are Sandy Fox, Donna Anderson, Milton Hudgens, Jane Sterling, Rudy Shackelford, myself, and Judy Berner. Thank you. I want to announce also that there is a Zoom meeting on our district scheduled for Monday, July the 6th at 7 p.m. Now this doesn't cost you anything. All that you need is a phone. What you'll do is you will hear and learn from a church on our district who has returned to some form of in-person worship, whether it's in sanctuary or parking lot worship. You'll hear what went well, what adjustments they needed to make on the fly, what adjustments they'll make afterwards in their experience. And all of this will help us as we get back to in-person worship, as well as encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ on the district. Call Judy Berner for the Zoom information. It's simply a phone number and a code that you punch in and you become part of that situation. Again, this is scheduled for this Monday, July the 6th at 7 p.m. Call Judy for the Zoom information. I want to let you know that we have double-digit responses for our church office administrator position and that our pastor, staff, parish, relations committee is on it. Also, please continue to remember to reach out to one another and especially to our most vulnerables. Remember, please, our folks at Gloucester House and York Convalescent. And remember those who are also out of the area, our homebound, our cancer patients, our folks recuperating from surgeries, and please remember our youth and our children. Cards and phone calls and notes mean so much. Thank you. And finally, I want to remind you, I announced several Sundays ago that the United Methodist Church is in 30 days of prayer, running from June 8th to July 8th. 30 days of prayer that we as a denomination are praying to end racism and end white supremacy in our land. I ask you again to join in prayer at 846 each day, twice, a.m. and p.m. for eight minutes and for 46 seconds, which is the time the officer held his knee on George Floyd's neck. Hope that you will begin to do that this day and then complete it this week. Let's have a moment of silence.
Amen. Hi, kids. Pastor Mike here with the children's story. I'm glad that you're joining us today. You know that the Bible has 66 books. I know you've learned that in Sunday school. It has an Old Testament and a New Testament. It has books of prophecy and songs and wisdom. It has the gospel from four different persons. Remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the rest of the Old Testament as well. Well, do you know what holds all the books of the Bible together? Do you know what the glue is that holds the Bible together? The glue is the story of God's plan of salvation. It begins in Genesis when we read about how God made the world and how man sinned. But in Genesis, we also find the first promise that Jesus would come to save us and to redeem us. And so the story of salvation, redemption, goes like glue through all the books of the Bible, keeping them all together from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible tells us something about the history of Israel. It tells us something about science and the world in which we live. It tells us something about mankind and humanity and nations trying to live together. But the main purpose of the Bible is to tell us how we can be saved. It tells how Jesus came to redeem us, how he came to save us, how he paid for our sins on the cross. He took our place so that we can have eternal life. When you read the Bible, remember the glue that holds it all together. Don't miss the big message, the message of salvation through Jesus, our Savior. God's love for us, perfectly shown to us in Jesus Christ, who gave us the Holy Spirit to love him and to love one another. Will you pray after me? Dear Jesus, Thank you for the story of salvation, that it is the glue that holds the Bible together. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's uh, stewardship moment is good news indeed. In June, we received an email from our district superintendent, Reverend Son Young Kim, encouraging churches to apply for a Paycheck Protection Program. That's Paycheck Protection Program, or called PPP. Whose, this was to encourage churches whose offerings have fallen off due to COVID-19 or for other reasons. Our finance committee looked into it. Kathy Raines, our new treasurer, researched it. And after discussion by way of a Zoom meeting, our finance committee agreed to apply for this loan. On Monday, June the 29th, Kathy received news that a PPP loan has been approved for Bethany for $23,800. This will be used for salaries and utilities only. This is a wonderful blessing for Bethany. Our thanks to our district superintendent and our finance committee for pursuing this. If you have any questions about this, please contact our treasurer, Kathy Raines, at accountantbumc at verizon.net if you have any questions. Thank you for your continuing witness to Christ's love through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. I invite you now, just as we do during in-person worship, to present your tithes and your offerings to God. Our offertory is Summertime from Porgy and Bess by George Gershwin.
Our hymn of preparation is America the Beautiful. If you have a hymnal, it's found on page 696. We'll sing the first two verses. Claire Hillard has our scripture reading today. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from two different books from the Revised Standard Version. The first from Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. The second from Luke 17, verses 9 through 10. From Ecclesiastes. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. From Luke chapter 17 verses 9 through 10. Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that is commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the word of the Lord. Today on this Independence Day weekend, I want to think with you about duty. Duty. It's, it's not a popular word. The word conjures up images of dull and monotonous behavior with a heavy dose of supervision, and to some, of doing something against our will. The message version of the scripture puts our first scripture like this. The last and final word is this, fear God, do what he tells you. And the message in Luke says it's this way. When you've done everything expected of you, be matter of fact and say, the work is done. What we were told to do, we did. What do you think of when you hear the word duty? What feelings do you have? I think there's a dangerous attitude in America today, and it's found in every generation. And it's this. The world owes us something, and we owe no one anything at all. Never admit a debt to anyone. This is not an indictment of any age group or generation. It concerns us all. We have so stressed human rights, and it must still be stressed, especially where people because of race or disability or nationality or political opinion or gender are concerned. But we forget no one can claim rights who does not admit to duties. For example, if I claim the rights of being a free citizen in a democratic republic such as America, then I must take some interest in my government and how we operate 
and take a stand when those in leadership get off the rails. If I claim the right of being able to walk our streets without fear, then I must admit my duty to pay for the upkeep of security and policing and participate in the safety of all persons and rein them in when they get off the rails. In other words, there can be no rights without corresponding duties. And the basic question is this. Do we recognize that we are debtors? Do we have a duty in life? The 19th century British historian and writer Thomas Carlyle was famous for saying this. Do the duty which lies nearest you, which you know to be a duty, and your second duty will already have become clearer. We should ask ourselves on this Independence Day weekend, are we first fulfilling the plain duties we accepted as disciples of Jesus Christ, then seek the comforts and the benefits of the Christian faith? Or do we seek the comforts and the benefits of the Christian faith without first fulfilling the plain duties we accepted as disciples of Jesus Christ. What is the order? Now, before I go any further, I have to say that there is a danger of having too much emphasis on duty. We can develop a duty religion, if you will, that makes faith no more than adherence to a set of rules and actions that fall far short of the Christian gospel. The story that comes to my mind is in the next chapter here in Luke, Luke chapter 18. Who was it that said, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, extortioners and the unjust and adulterers. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all I possess. It was the Pharisees in the temple, wasn't it? Who saw duty to God only in the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments, but who missed Christ who is the perfect expression of the same law and commandments and the one for whom we waited. Jesus said that the other person, the tax collector, who could not even raise his eyes to heaven, who knew his shame and self and hurt and could only eke out, God be merciful to me, a sinner. This man, Jesus says, went back to his home justified rather than the other one. You see, what Jesus has to say about duty is radical. And the good news is that there is a way to fulfill our duty without becoming like the Pharisees. And it's by letting Jesus expand this idea of duty. Remember in the scriptures where it said, all those things which are commanded you, all those things which are expected of you, and what are they? They're not just a list of thou shalt nots or thou shalt do this. Rather, it's the total ministry of love to God, to all persons, set forth in the life and the teachings of our Lord. When we accept it, two things happen. It gives us humility and it gives us hope. Our Christian duty is what we owe to God. And we owe God everything. When we do all we possibly can, and there's no room for complacency or excuses or self-congratulation, we do it out of humility and out of hope. We see what it means truly to owe everything to God. We realize the immensity of our debt. The Holy Spirit makes our spiritual growth possible. Duty is translated into love. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote that sacred head for such a sinner as I? But drops of tears can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. Christian duty. We do it 
out of humility, and out of hope. God grant us fiery tongues so that we may speak out to the systems of this world, tongues that allow us to listen to one another and to be heard by one another with a renewed clarity. I pray that God will endow us with a mighty wind to spread the good news of Jesus Christ that will move our hands and our hearts to active service. A duty that fills us with your vision, God, for our lives. These lives that we love, this nation that we love, for the church that we love, for this world that we love, so that we might see each other not as we are, but as each can be. I want you to hear again the scriptures read by Claire Hillard. And when you hear the word duty, think humility and hope. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from two different books from the Revised Standard Version. The first is from the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. The second will be from Luke, chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. From Ecclesiastes, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. From Luke 17, verses 9 through 10, does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that is commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the word of the Lord. Our closing hymn is America. We'll sing the first two verses if you have a hymnal. It's page 697. We also refer to it as My Country, Tis of Thee. From our family to yours, I wish you the happiest 4th of July that you can have. Our benediction is taken from the daily office from our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Church. Please receive the benediction. And now give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let your blessings to us be ours to share with others, to your glory, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing carillon, postlude, is let there be peace on earth. God bless you until we are able to worship again. Mm -hmm.